Hi, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I'm going to be sharing a new project with my Fabulous Frame stamp set. Using the Fabulous Frame and a technique called thumping, I'm going to show you how to change up the look of this frame to give it a stitched look, something like this. The thumping technique is basically when you take a water-based marker and tap onto a bold stamp, but when we do this on the borders of the Fabulous Frame, it's going to look like you just stitched all of those outlines. It's very easy to do. The other products and tools that you're going to need for today's project, you'll need the Fabulous Frame stamp set and a large block. I'm going to be using the Christmas Pine Dark Chocolate and Red Hot Gina K ink pads. I'm going to be using the Fabulous Frame fillers set to just fill in some accents and add some color. I have a few Spectrum Noir markers that I'm going to use to color in that Stately Flower 6 pine cone, the EB6, the G BG5, and then I'm just going to take a blender to remove a little bit of this color, but I'm keeping the coloring really simple today to show you how little you have to do on this pine cone because it already has so much shading in the actual stamped image. You'll need some smaller blocks for the pine cone and for those smaller details, and then I have a long block for one of those trim pieces from Fabulous Frame Fillers. You'll also need a marker, and this is just a Tim Holtz Stress Marker, the Pine Needles, but you could use Memento Markers, or just really anything with a nice long brush tip for going across that border. I'm also going to use just some of this plaid Gina K ribbon, some scissors to cut off the ends, and then I'm going to use just a little glue dot to adhere that. And I've got some white Pure Luxury cardstock that I'm going to be stamping on. Finally, we are going to use the Wink of Stella just to add a little bit of glitter to that pine cone. So after I create my A2 size card, I'm going to unfold it so that I can stamp this border onto it. And I'm going to take the marker. Let me give myself a little bit of room here. Now, you're not going to see the little marks that I'm making on the stamp as I go, but you'll see the pattern that I'm doing. And I'm just gonna start from one end and I'm just going to get into a ribbon, a ri rhythm, excuse me, a press, 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 press. So you just go across and don't worry too much about whether you're going exactly evenly because this is supposed to look stitched. So if you hand stitched it, there would be a little bit of variation in the length between each one. Now I can see this. Your stamp will appear wet, so you'll be able to see in between, and if you have a really big gap, you can just go back in and add another line. But I'm going across both the thin and the outer thick border. And you will be able to easily add a stitch back in if you see a place that you missed with the fine tip of the marker because you already have all the lines around it as a guide. So now I'm going across that belly band, around the oval, this one, I'll do the end here. And if this seems a little tedious compared to just stamping it, you're getting a different look, but I'm also not going to color inside of it, so that's going to save me time. Okay, so you'll just want to hold it to the light, and I can check it and see that, yes, I did get every edge there. Then I need to go in and huff to reactivate all this ink, so you're just going to blow a little bit of your breath to make sure that the very first stitch is going to be as juicy as the last that you inked up. And then I'm just going to place it on there carefully. Press all over. And lift. Isn't that cool? So I have a couple little spots that I might touch up there at the corners. And so I can just take my fine point and just dab it in because I can see how to make the line go straight across just by following it. So you know, depending on how OCD you are with really wanting everything to match up, you can add that in, and just wherever you're adding a stitch, you just go across from it. But that turned out pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in the little belly band fillers from the Fabulous Frame Filler Set. 
and I'm using the dark chocolate. Pardon my head if I get in the way. I just like to go over it to make sure that it's centered. Okay, and lift that off. And we'll do the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna take this little line that is also in that fabulous frame filler set, and this is meant like a two-step stamp to press into the middle of this striped border. So just put that on either side, in the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the scallop at the bottom. I just wanted the red bouncing around the card on my final image, so that's why I decided to add it. But also to show you, I've had a lot of people ask about, how do we get this straight on here? Well, first of all, you wanna make sure that it is straight on your block. And you can do that by just lifting up the ends and just letting it fall or by putting it on your work surface and then pressing the block to that. You're going to get a really true shape of that line rather than sticking it and then having it want to stick and, and get off. But also, when you press it down, hold it over the cardstock and look at each end. And if you've got one end of the border at that inside line of your frame on either side and it's touching on this end too, then you're good to go, that's straight. Okay, so we'll lift that off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my pine cone and tassel from Stately Flower 6. So I was kind of surprised to find that the pine cone was actually a state flower, but I love this stamp. Winter cards, Christmas, masculine cards. And you noticed probably today that instead of putting a Christmas greeting on it, I put a thank you because I do have a lot of thank yous to send after I get presents. So that one comes from the Fabulous Frame Filler set as well. I like to stamp this one in a dark green because that way you don't have to color in your pine needles. And sometimes it's hard to get that middle portion of the stamp when you press. So do make sure that you do a lot of pressure. I'm just going to take the fine point of this marker and just color in fill in some of those needles that I missed there. So you see, I never start over if I don't have to. Okay, now let's go ahead and take the EB6, and I'm going to just quickly fill in this pine cone, going in circles. And you see there's a lot of shading on the underside of each of those little petals of the pine cone give it a lot of texture but also it just really darkens whatever brown you're adding to it and sometimes I use two or three browns on this but I just wanted to show you if you only have one marker you can still make this look really good and then fill in just a little branch there okay now if you want to add it and make it darker just go back in over the stamped areas where you see a lot of those lines and if you want to make certain portions of it lighter, that's why I grabbed the blender pen for this one. And this is also great for if you make any mistakes because you're going so quickly. But you can just dab this on the little ends of the tips. And you might not see it fading right away, but then it will about 10 or 15 seconds after. So you're basically just pushing that dark color away. Now let's go ahead and take the BG6, keep opening the wrong end, and I'm just gonna trace under this to make this look more dimensional. And I'm just putting it on the left side as if the light is falling from the right. Put it just a tiny bit under a few of these and then I'm just going to do just a few strokes through here to create a shadow for those needles. Okay, now I'm going to dab on a little bit of the Stella. And this blends in since it's a clear silver glitter. But hopefully when I pick it up and tilt it in the light, you'll be able to see that gorgeous shimmer. So this is a great pen. It's so easy to use. So hopefully you can see that sparkle. And that really adds a lot to the pine cone. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little thanks. 
in the red so that I've got that red moving around the card like I said before right there and then I'm going to use this little bit of ribbon just to tie into a little bow so that I give it some bling and some dimension on this single layer card and then I will cut those ends Trim that. And then just take my glue dot, press it to the center of that bow, and just put it on the edge there at a little angle. Isn't that sweet? And then you just fold it up, and your card is complete. I hope you enjoyed this technique, and I hope it gives you some ideas for how you can use your fabulous frame in other ways. And I just think the stitching is a lot of fun. I also have stitch borders in that fabulous frame filler set, so you can add more accents with that. Also, if you want to fill this in, you can. I'd recommend using a lighter color. Um, a darker color is going to go outside of that line, and the border is not going to look quite as neat. Thank you for watching today. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more inspiration and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more ideas with my stamp sets from Gina K Designs. Thank you for watching.